All right, Professor Klein coming back to you from the BIOS 1300 Human Anatomy and Physiology Lab at Ohio University. Today, we are talking about joints. So we've got the skeleton here that will walk through all the different joints that you're responsible for knowing for the lab this week. Uh, first off, a joint is determined by where two bones would come together. Uh, when a bone touches another bone, we refer to that, to that as two bones articulating. And articulation means two bones coming together. Technically, there's always a little bit of connective tissue in between, so they're not truly touching, but we consider two bones touching as an articulation. So we're posterior here and we're going to first look at the scapulothoracic joint. That's the joint formed by the scapula and the posterior aspect of these ribs or the thoracic region. So it's a unique joint and the fact that the scapula sits with on the rib cage. This is the scapulothoracic joint. Next, the vertebrae have two key joints. And if you look right here, there's a joint formed by this vertebrae and then the underneath or the inferior vertebrae to that. That's called a facet joint. There's one on the right. Underneath that hook, there's one on the left. This is true for every single level of vertebrae. These are all called the facet joints. Now, if it's in the cervical region, it's a cervical facet joint. But let's say we're down in the thoracic region. Right here would be the thoracic facet joint. All the way down lumbar region, you've guessed it, it's the lumbar facet joint. But then finally, we're at the lumbosacral joint, which is L5 and the sacrum. L5, sacrum, lumbo, sacral, facet, joint. Flip it to the front. The other main type of joint, and we'll start at the bottom here, is the intervertebral joint. This intervertebral joint has the interverte or intervertebral disc in between that joint. Now the joint is formed by the two adjacent vertebral bodies, which form the intervertebral joint. In this case, it's the lumbar. Up in here would be thoracic intervertebral. And if we went all the way up to the cervical region, that would be the cervical intervertebral. Coming back down here, in between L5 and the sacrum is the lumbosacral intervertebral joint, this disc right here. But notice the sacrum and the hip bone or the ilium, it's the ilium right here, come together in what's called the sacroiliac joint or the SI joint one on the left there's also one on the right last one in the middle of the body where the two pubic tubercles can come together you know this is the pubic symphysis and that would be the pubic symphysis joint we're on to the upper extremity focusing first on where the humoral head connects to the glenoid cavity of the scapula is called the glenohumoral joint, often abbreviated the GH joint and often referred to as the shoulder joint. 
down to the elbow. This is the elbow joint. But there's actually three joints with this. Where the humerus meets the ulna. Humoro ulnar. Where the humerus connects to the radius. Humoral radial. And then, look very closely, the ulna and the radius have an articulation, which is the radial ulnar joint. But be careful, there's two radial ulnar joints. This is the proximal radial ulnar joint. And distally, down here at the wrist, is the distal radial ulnar joint joint. Make sure you say proximal for this one and distal for this one. Keeping it going in the hand, you can see these small bones are the carpal bones. These bones here, the metacarpals, and then the phalanges, proximal, middle, distal. Now the joint in between the carpals and the metacarpals shown here is the carpometacarpal joint or CMC joint. Keep it going. This joint here is your MCP joint or your metacarpal phalangeal joint. That's like these of your knuckles. Keep it going. You have the proximal interphalangeal joint, PIP joint, and then finally the distal interphalangy joint, DIP. Now you only have the proximal, PIP, PIP, and distal, DIP or DIP on the four fingers, two through five, but the first digit, the thumb, only has an MCP joint, and just an IP joint for interphalangeal, because it only has a proximal and distal phalange. All right, we're on to the lower extremity. We're gonna fly through these because they are very generalized. You might Google or look in other textbooks and find more specific names, but we will stick to these generalized names. For example, the first one where the femur connects with the acetabulum of the hip bone is the hip joint. Also referred to as the femoral joint, but you can refer to it as the hip joint. Traveling downward, we're at the knee. So the knee joint is technically the tibia and the femur. The femur has another articulation with the patella called the patellar femoral joint as shown here, but the probe is in between. Keep it going all the way down here. We've got the tallow curl joint. Zoom into this one. Tallow curl refers to the talus and the curl or lower leg region of the lower body. So tallow curl. And then any one of these joints with the rest of the talus or tarsal bones is called the subtalar joints. Subtalar joints. So just like in the hand, you've got things like the MTP joint, but this is the metatarsal phalangeal joint, MTP, 
on the big toe, first toe, and interphalangeal joint. But then over here, we also have a PIP, PEP, proximal interphalangeal, interphalangeal joint, and DIP, DIP, distal interphalangeal joint. Taking a quick look at the skull, we can see what's called the temporal mandibular joint. Temporal mandibular joint. It's the joint formed by the temporal bone of the skull and the mandible, specifically the head of the mandible which locks in like that. Also, on top, you can see these sutures, which are the joints that fuse the different bones of the skull together, called the suture joints. We will get to those later in the semester. Hey everybody, thanks for watching the video. Give us a thumbs up if you liked it and helped you out. Leave a comment for other videos that we should make on human anatomy and physiology. And we'll catch you next time.